Hey, what's up everyone? James here, and I bring you the epic conclusion of Cobra Commander. Make sure to hit that like button, and if you happen to be new here or need to catch up, the link to the Cobra Commander playlist is right here and right below the like button. One thing I want to mention is that a portion of Cobra Commander's final issue covers what is happening at Cobra La, but I'll be covering that in my Megatron Returns video. With that out of the way, let's get into the rise of Cobra. So, this opens with Cobra Commander forcing Ripper to lead him to the Dreadnought's secret bunker. Remember, in the last video, it ended with Nemesis Enforcer tearing the Dreadnoughts apart. It was awesome. Also, in that video, we learned the Dreadnoughts have a scientist as a prisoner in this bunker who is behind their steady supply of Energon. Cobra Commander enters the bunker and finds the scientist. Now, this isn't just some random scientist. This is Dr. Laszlo Vandermeer, who's been a part of the G.I. Joe universe since its inception. He first appeared in the miniseries that launched G.I. Joe called The Mass Device, where he was the one who developed the technology behind it and was the world's leading expert on it, which was matter transference, basically teleporting solid objects from one place to another. Initially, Dr. Laszlo believes the commander is here to save him. He'll soon find out how wrong he is. Cobra Commander assures him that he doesn't have to worry about the Dreadnoughts anymore because they're being dealt with. And that's where we go to next. Nemesis has indeed demolished most of the Dreadnoughts. Only Zorana, Buzzer, Xandar, and Torch, who luckily still has his head intact after Nemesis Enforcer trashed him. These guys realize they're no match for this beast and are just trying to survive. Xandar comes up with a plan to blow up some Energon and use it as a cover for them to escape. What's funny here is Buzzer asks how he plans to get past Nemesis to grab some Energon from their base. Xandar answers, I'll come up with something. He grabs Buzzer and throws him out in the open. In the blink of an eye, Nemesis grabs him, pulls him into the air, and breaks his arm. Xandar makes a run for the base. Nemesis sees this, drops Buzzer, and charges after him. Xandar throws an Energon Molotov cocktail at him and blows it up. Luckily for the Dreadnoughts, Nemesis is taken down long enough for them to escape. Now he really could have quickly gotten to them and taken them out, but he decided to let them go. At the Dreadnoughts bunker, Cobra Commander is learning how Dr. Laszlo processed the raw Energon. Laszlo explains that the Dreadnoughts would harvest the raw Energon from the swamps and he would convert it into a new form of energy. The Commander astutely points out though that there's more Energon here than could have possibly been in the swamps. Laszlo reveals the Dreadnoughts wanted him to make more Energon, but he found it impossible. However, after trying every technique, he realized that with the correct elements of the Energon and the right tools, he could expand it with radiation sources to create a less pure version of it that works. He demonstrates this by electrifying the pink shard of raw Energon and converting it into a blue cube form. What I like about this is Skybound is giving us two of the four different colors we've seen Energon depicted in Transformers Media. The other two colors I'm referring to is yellow and purple. The other thing I like is Laszlo's conversion process turns the Energon into a cube form, which is the form it was initially given in the G1 show. Cobra Commander places it before his Beetlebots, which devour the cube and immediately transform into more powerful versions they each look distinct now from the other. Now, hear me out here. I have a wild theory. What if Cobra Commander eventually creates his own Transformers? He will soon have plenty of Energon to do it, and he is familiar with the anatomy of a Transformer, since he experimented on Megatron for years. I think those Transformers he'll create will be the Insecticons, since he has a thing for insectoid robots. Granted, for all we know, they're on Cybertron somewhere, a part of Shockwave's forces, and that's why we haven't seen them yet. But I still think he will create his own at some point. Comment below what you all think of my theory. Moments later, Cobra Commander exits the bunker and informs Nemesis Enforcer of Dr. Laszlo and his expansion process. He explains that with this Energon, they can build new weapons to sell to the Dreadnoughts list of buyers that Ripper will give them. With the funds they receive from that, they will build up their resources to create the greatest army the world has ever seen and bring it to Cobra Law. This is where it gets nuts. After Cobra Commander explains his plan and says, come Nemesis, let's begin our triumphant journey back. 
Nemesis doesn't move and just continues to stare at the commander. Beginning to get frustrated, the commander calls him an imbecile and orders him to move. At that moment, Nemesis pushes the commander into the ground. Ripper uses this moment to escape. When Cobra Commander yells at Nemesis to get Ripper because they need him, Nemesis responds, your mission is over. I no longer follow your orders. Cobra Commander instantly realizes Nemesis was never here to help him with his mission. He was here to kill him. He dodges Nemesis' attack and throws one of his beetle bots at him while pleading for his life. With just a slap from his wing, Nemesis destroys the insectoid robot. He says, you're pathetic. Galobulus never fell for your manipulations. Even with your mask on, he could see your forked tongue. You little snake. Our world is pure and you were going to tarnish it with your blasphemous metal. An outsider will never ascend in Cobra Law. And now that we have the scientists, we don't need you. Cobra Commander uses Buzzer's chainsaw to strike Nemesis, but he misses. Nemesis grabs his mask and rips it right off his face. The commander's electrocution failsafe on his mask doesn't even phase Nemesis. The commander again tries to plead for his life, begging Nemesis to take him home. Nemesis responds by tearing through the commander's chest while yelling, it was never your home. His butt whipping doesn't end there. Nemesis grabs the commander, lifts him into the sky, then he immediately comes crashing down and smashes the commander's body into the ground. If this were any other human, they would have been dead already or begging for a quick death. Cobra Commander says, I will not just lay down and die. This is yet another example of how tough and resilient the commander is, especially when in the last video, he was thoroughly tortured by the Dreadnoughts and hasn't even recovered from that. Yet, he is still taking this beating from Nemesis and is not giving up. After hearing the commander say this, Nemesis says, then run, human, run. Cobra Commander replies, I will not run from you or anyone. You think I did not consider this and don't have a secret weapon of my own? The Energon is mine. As Nemesis dive bombs towards him, the commander pulls an Iron Man by having his Beetlebots form a mechanical glove which he feeds a vial of Energon and fires a concentrated beam of Energon from the glove right through Nemesis's torso. Like damn son, I told you all this Cobra Commander is dangerous and diabolical. Now we don't get confirmation that Nemesis survived the blast or if he's truly dead. All we see next is the commander capturing Ripper who sees the commander's face and comments on how it looks like a bowl of puke, which I found odd because he still has the wraps around his face, even though he might not have his mask on anymore. Anyways, Cobra Commander forces him to reveal who the Dreadnoughts were planning to sell the Energon to. Ripper answers, it's a guy with the biggest company in the world. His name is Destro. Cobra Commander has found his next target. Sometime later, Cobra Commander attacks and raids each one of Destro's Mars facilities across the US. Destro, at the most recent facility that's been attacked, demands to know who's responsible for this, because after everything that happened with Duke, he cannot afford for himself and Mars to look weak. Mercer reports that all he's heard is rumors of a new player who's been recruiting mercs with the promise of money and more, and that this latest attack wasn't about stealing anything, but all about leaving a message. Mercer drags in the messenger before Destro, which is revealed to be Ripper. Initially, Destro believes the Dreadnoughts have betrayed him, but Ripper insists they're victims of the same madman who's invited him to meet. With his forces and towing Ripper, Destro arrives at the meeting place, an empty town. Ripper warns Destro that the man they're meeting with is sick. Suddenly, one of the Mars troops takes a shot to the head in front of Destro. All these small laser turrets pop up from the ground all around them and take out all of Destro's troops. He and Mercer run for the chopper, but no shot, it gets blown up. Cobra Commander then makes his grand entrance, greeting Destro. Destro orders Mercer to kill the commander and he grabs him, but the commander mentions he's allowed them to live because they're his guests and that he does have a gun aimed at them. Despite Mercer and Ripper advising against it, Destro orders Mercer to release the commander and listens to this opportunity he has for him. 
the commander brings Destro to his lab beneath the town, where he has a team of scientists and tanks filled with Energon. He introduces Destro to Dr. Laszlo. What's kind of sad and kind of funny too is when Laszlo introduces himself to Mercer, he whispers, please kill me. Cobra Commander reveals to Destro that he's been watching him and many other players worldwide, all with the same motives, money and power. He believes they should be united under common leadership. He then unveils one of the experiments he and his team have been working on, which is powering one of Destro's battle android troopers with Energon, the same one Duke destroyed. This shows us that Cobra Commander might possibly be working with someone in the government, or they just easily stole it. He demonstrates the power of the bat powered by Energon by having it wipe out the entire group of mercs he hired in the blink of an eye. Cobra Commander proposes an alliance to Destro, all of Mars at his disposal in exchange for his energy and technology, but only he can create and control it. Destro agrees to his terms. Cobra Commander says, the new world is coming and will be in my grasp. Destro corrects him and says, our grasp. The commander replies, of course. When Destro asks the commander, who are you? Cobra Commander dons his Cobra Law uniform and answers, the future. He invites Destro to this town hall meeting. Now, though he's agreed to work with the commander, Destro reveals to Mercer that he thinks the commander may be behind the flying robot Duke mentioned, and that they need his power source. So they'll play the lunatics game for now. Cobra Commander begins his speech. He says, you all came here not because of what I have to offer, but because you want to find purpose. I was lost once too. Everything in my being told me there was more out there in the world, and it took pain for me to see my full capabilities. I have seen more than you can imagine, and I will share it with you. We'll create a new world together. We are Cobra. That's the end of Cobra Commander. Next, we'll be focusing on the Lord of War himself, Destro. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see that series. And if you need to get caught up on the Energon universe, check out the playlist right here. Other than that, have an awesome day, and always remember every day to go beyond.